Okay, Ed asks, are there different type of triggers? For the core methodology, no. The only thing that would be different would be a market on close for something like an IPO. So the buy and B pattern. If you go to my YouTube channel, at Dave Landry is my handle, and search for the buy at B pattern. You'll see some of those. And you could also find them on my website, DaveLandry.com. So that would be the only different type of trigger. That would be a market on close order. But as far as triggers in general, I'll walk you through those in just one second. When we have a new setup, what is the trigger or types of triggers that could make us a buyer? Okay, I'll walk through that. It's, it's just, it's only one trigger, but it depends on where you place that trigger. Maybe you can, maybe you could explain with regards to the newest setup. I ran out of time tonight, but I'll I'll throw in the setup next week. I had the entry just above the high of one of the wide range bars, if memory serves, and I'm going to walk you through that with a generic example here in one second. And that's because if it, if it comes all the way back, I think that it's a viable candidate. If it drops and doesn't trigger, then you just want to sit on your hands and then find another setup. And that'll make sense too. I know it's all in the books, but it's lots absorbed by reading. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that I, I learned early on um, when I was working with Jeff Cooper. You know, I read his books and I did the programming and stuff. And, uh, there's a gap between the book and and not just his book, any book, you know, my books too, I guess, between that and the, the reality of trading. And that's why I developed the courses. And that's why when I do these webinars, I'm trying to connect the dots and show real trades and show what I did and express my frustrations, uh, which might be coming out a little tonight, and things like that on things on that nature. Because there is a gap between, I would say, the 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 book and the actual trading any book on trading and actual trading and it's uh i guess the the saying is the map is not the territory okay so i hear you on that no problem with the and thanks for asking actually uh thank you great job on stock charts can't wait to the next installment of reminiscence of a stock operator i read that book but you make it come to life cheers yeah there's so much good stuff in that book and i'm kind of doing it in a way from a selfish standpoint it's sort of forcing me to go through all this stuff. And then in the process, now I'm rereading his biography. And then I'm going to read um, How to Trade Stocks, which is which is his book. And uh and see what I can see what I can get from from that to kind of fill in the holes with the reminiscence and everything else. And uh, he was a uh, he was an interesting individual. He didn't always walk on water, but um, we'll save that for those shows. But thank you. I'm glad you like those, you know, because somebody on a YouTube comment, some guy said it was mumbo jumbo. <laughs> I don't know. It's funny. If you actually trade, it's like everything to me makes a lot of sense that I say. But I guess if you don't trade, maybe not. Who knows? Okay. So if you get a, a textbook TKO where you close close to the bottom of the range, you got a wide range bar like I mentioned earlier, then you could actually put your entry just above the high. And by the way, a lot of times you can put your stop right below the low and the beauty of that as i preach if you have the entry and the stop then you know what your initial profit target is going to be so yes on a wide range bar to the downside with a tko or it could be a tko within like a pullback like the setup he was asking about a minute ago and again i'll cover that next week then you can get that entry pretty close to the high. I always enter above at least a one bar high, and it might be a two or three bar high, depending on the close and everything else. And I'll flesh that out in just one second. So the beauty of this pattern with the textbook TKO is you got the methodology, which is a TKO, it should be easy to recognize. You got a strong trend, you got a wide range bar down after market recently made some new highs. Okay. And then you know where you're gonna enter, you know where your stop's gonna be, that you know your initial profit target. And by the way, oh, somebody asked me about scans um, a couple of days ago. I don't know if I answered them or not. I saw it on my phone, but I didn't see it on the actual group. If you go to members resources, if you go to the members dashboard, there should be members resources on there, davelander.com slash members. And under members resources, I give away, I have scans 
for right now, just have scans for um, telechart. So I'll give those away there if you need those. Over time, I'll probably have some scans for something like stock charts. And if somebody wants to write a, um, a Landry Light pullback scan or something like that, I'll, I'll be happy to publish that too. So that's what the scans are. You might have to change the parameters and the volume because the new TC, which has been out for 10 years, I think, <laughs> reports actual volume. Now, let's say we're trading our generic pullback, okay? And the idea with the pullback, and I've gotten to a, not a heated argument, but a bit of a discussion with someone once. I think it was a, an email banter. And they were more of an engineering type. And they said that I trade reversion to the mean. And I'm like, those are fighting words, right? Well, he finally got me to admit that I trade reversion to the mean in the direction of the trend, okay? So the idea with the pullback is to first identify a fantastic setup and then have an adequate pullback enough to knock some people out, possibly attract some eager shorts. And then if the trend resumes, you could possibly take, take advantage of the predicament of these traders or investors or whoever they are. So yes, we're looking to capture reversion to the mean in the direction of the trend and hopefully, and there's that word again, but hopefully it turns into something much bigger. Now, let's say you wanna enter right above the high. The problem with that is a lot of times noise alone will trigger you in and then the stock rolls right back over. So your entry in a case like that would be too close. Now, let's say you decide, well, I'm gonna enter way up here. Well, you're gonna give up that reversion to the mean move and you're not gonna capture it, right? So you're not gonna get that bounce up. And by the time it gets all the way up here to trigger you in, and, and that's a spot, as I'll show you in one second, where a lot of times we're actually taking profits at that level, we're actually pulling off half our shares and a lot of times it, that's all we get a lot of times we get stopped out a lot of times we just get the ipt and scratch and that's okay and occasionally we catch a nice long trend but again you're not going to get your reversion to the mean move if your entry is way up towards the old high the other thing to remember too is breakouts are prone to failure now way back in the day before everybody had a pc on their desk maybe not Maybe they worked a little better. And certain times in history, like 1999, and then every now and then, every few weeks in crypto, crypto goes crazy again, you could just buy breakouts in crypto. And in 1999, you could have bought breakouts and, and made a lot of money on breakouts. Uh, the Turtles claim to fame was trading a simple breakout system, and they absolutely printed money. They did realize about a halfway to the program that they were risking way too much and it could have blown up. And I would never be shot on Friday, but a lot of turtles had difficulties afterwards, it's my understanding. And that's just because they were, you know, not to take anything away from them, but they were in the right place at the right time. And they did, they were pretty amazing in what they did. And breakouts were breaking out and following through. They were trading commodities. It was a great commodity bull market. But as a general statement, breakouts are prone to failure. I know people trade breakouts and they're, Accuracy is abysmal, but occasionally they catch a home run. Well, it kind of sounds like us lately with the core methodology. Now, sometimes, oh, getting back to the entries, you want to figure out a way where it's not so close to the market that you get triggered on just a little noise alone, but far enough away, but not so far away to where you're going to give up your reversion to the mean move. Okay. So let's say your entry is there a little bit above the price, it trigger in. And then you get your IPT out of the trade. And then, like I said a second ago, maybe it runs out of steam and comes back in. Hopefully not. There's a word again. But hopefully you at least get the IPT from the reversion to the mean move in, in the direction of the trend. So you want your entry to be just about right. Now, as I said earlier, let's say you've got a wide range bar that closes poorly kind of like that textbook TKO, then you can put your enter in right above the high. Now, let's say you've got a close that looks like this. 
you're going to have to put your entry a little bit further away. You want the market to prove itself by triggering an entry, okay? So you need to think about where you want that entry. And then once you figure out where that entry is, you need to think about where would you be wrong, absolutely wrong. Now, if you're trading a first pullback after a base breakout, let's say you got a big fat base down here, then your stop can go somewhere just below that base because you know the pattern failed. And there's a lot, or if you're trading a transitional pattern, let's say you're shorting and it's rolling over, or a better example would be, let's say you're buying as the market's kind of coming off its lows. Well, if it goes down back down the new lows, you're wrong, or even if it begins to approach those lows, so your stop is somewhere between those old lows and where you got in. So a little bit more defined in certain situations like that and in a textbook TKM. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. If you have any more questions on that, uh, let me know now, and then we can bring it up to Facebook.